Breakthrough Project, uh, OC Loop Segment OPQ. Um, I think I pretty much know everyone here, but my name is Veronica Coley, and I'm a senior civil engineer here with Orange County Public Works uh, in our project development group. Uh, so tonight we plan on covering uh, high level project information while giving you an opportunity uh, to provide us with your feedback and ask us questions. So joining me tonight from the county are, are Danusha Arulagan, Brad Fowler, um, Austin Morgan, and uh, the county has also partnered with Mark Thomas on this project. Uh, their firm is doing the design for the county on this project, as well as helping us uh, prepare a grant application to seek some construction funding um, for some phases of this project. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Stephen Patching from Mark Thomas. Thanks, Sonica. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen right now. So thanks again, Sonica, for the introduction and um, to the county folks for hosting um, <clears throat> this meeting. Um, we're gonna go through um, the project um, status and we're going to um, provide some opportunity for discussion, um, primarily using Mentimeter. So there'll be some opportunities to do some interactive feedback and um, ask questions along the way. Uh, my colleague, Perry Chavez, is also joining me from Mark Thomas. Um, Perry is going to be um, helping out, answering questions, uh, monitoring the questions on the chat. I um, uh, strongly recommend putting questions in the chat, um, even if you want to ask them. Um, vocally, it's a good way for us to memorialize those questions um, and um, in a good way for make sure we don't miss those questions that you may have. So we have a small group. Um, I think as we go through here, um, we can make some time for some questions, um, but I also want to make sure we don't ask questions that I'll be covering in the presentation later. So um, if it's something you really want to um, talk about at that point, We'll do it, but uh, there'll be plenty of time afterwards to, to you know, we can go back and um, re reference some slides. Uh, so thanks again for coming out. Um, you know, these are uh, some unique times, and uh, public meetings are um, are um, we're, we're encountering different challenges with those all the time. So we know everyone's busy, and we really appreciate you coming out and. Um, showing interest in this really amazing project. So just uh, some ground rules for the project, the um, presentation. Um, as you probably know, you saw the, the alert, this meeting is being recorded. Um, to ask questions, there are, there's an icon that you see there, um, the Q&A, and when you click on that, um, uh, you can raise your hand feature. Um, we absolutely invite and respect all perspectives. Um, we ask that one person speaks at a time just for clarity. And um, everyone will have a chance to participate, especially with the group this size. And we don't expect this to be an issue, but it goes without saying, be respectful of other people's opinions. So this is a twofold um, presentation. One, we wanna provide information and update status of the project give you some visuals so you better understand what some of the concepts are for the projects and give you um, a timeline and um, just some really kind of the logistics of how the project is um, going to move forward. And then we're gonna ask for your input. We wanna know what you think about um, biking on the Coyote Creek Bikeway, the OC Loop in general, and how this project um, you know, would enhance that um, or how it would impact your um, cycling, uh, um, your daily cycling, or if you're not a cyclist, if you would be, um, if this would be a catalyst for that. So the project purpose and benefits, this serves, the project serves several purposes and really provides substantial benefits to the local communities in a region. The project is closing a 1.6 mile gap and once it's built, it 
completes a stretch of over 15 miles of infrastructure really dedicated to biking and walking. With the 15 miles, there's connections throughout those 15 miles to regional and local destinations. Um, and it really gets back to gaps discourage walking and bicycling. Gaps are often a result of significant barriers such as freeways, waterways, railways, and uh, high-speed local roads. The project tackles these barriers head on and recommends some really exciting concepts um, that will uh, get us across those barriers or overcome those barriers. And finally, we love to, to walk and bicycle for many reasons, but two main reasons are the exercise and joy of health improvements they bring, as well as the, the benefit of one less internal combustion engine car on the road. And that, that's what this project is really the final piece in that much larger um, connection um, that we'll show and talk about um, upcoming here. But I wanted to also um, give a little bit of context. This project is a result of um, two uh, guiding documents, the 7030 plan that uh, completes the OC loop. That's the um, cover on the left. And the um, OC active Orange County's bike and ped plan, which you see the cover on the right. The 7030 plan, that, re that refers to the percentage of trail constructed at the time of the publication. So 70% of the trail was constructed and um, remaining to be constructed was 30. The feasibility study provides recommendations and cost estimates to close the gaps of the remaining 30% of the network. And it's compiled in a really easy to read document. So community stakeholders, they can easily refer to it um, in the, the communities themselves, it's a great reference point for funding and implementation. And then the OC Active pro, uh, document, that was developed a few years ago in 2019. And that introduces the, the layered bicycle network with the local bikeways, city-focused regional bikeways, um, and the connectors, which you know, serve the, the region at large. Um, and the connectors expand on the concept of the OC loop. So you, you have the OC loop and then you have the, the, um, the uh, projects that tangent off of that and, and get us into the communities. So here's a graphic that gives you a little bit more of a regional perspective and location of a project. This is the uh, uh, a regional map that shows the OC loop entirety um, what's built and what's planned to be built. And then the, the red halo, that area is where we are going to be um, focusing on for this project. And some of the, um, the, the data points there on the left of the OC loop, that there's 66 miles of, um, of a trail there that, as you can see, um, heads up into the, the foothills um, from the from the ocean, the beach, and back, and, and travels through uh, scores of different communities and, and with access to hundreds of destinations, if not more. Uh, 58 miles of those trails, or 58 miles of the loop are trails. Um, and those trails are San Gabriel River, Santa Ana River, Coastal Beach Trail, and the Coyote Creek, which we'll be talking about today. Uh, about 88% of the OC loop is already in place. So from that 70-30, we've actually uh, changed those and improved upon those percentages. We went from 70-30 to 88 and 12. So we're, uh, we're advancing, we're, we're getting stuff done, and this project is going to continue that. Uh, so the Coyote Creek Bikeway, as you saw on the previous slide, and we'll get a little bit more of an idea here, is, is probably have you know as a subsection of the OC loop. And as it stands now, almost 15 miles of that stretches from La Habra and also Santa Fe Springs in LA County, the whole way to the beach in um, Seal Beach. So with this, um, well, I'll also go over some of the bullet points there. Some of the uh, destinations that are within a reasonable distance from that trail um, as you can see, there are 24 city parks, over 120,000 homes, almost 900 businesses, 19 schools, and of course, a little thing called the Pacific Ocean. So a lot of destinations for errand running, um, 
jobs, employment, um, schools, and then of course recreation. So it serves a really great purpose for um, both of those as a utilitarian uh, a utility uh, facility and a recreation facility. So here is a segment O, segment P, and segment Q. Um, we won't spend too much time on segment O because it's actually funded. But since it's part, it hasn't been built and it's part of this process, we wanted to include it for context um, just because you know, folks, will, if we're not talking about it and it's not out there, then there's gonna be, folks are wondering what we're doing. So for the sake of the discussion, we're gonna include segment O. Um, also, as you can see, the project kind of weaves in and out of Orange County and LA County, touches in Cerritos, Buena Park, La Mirada, um, pretty close to Fullerton. So it's a multi-jurisdictional, multi-county um, project. The stars that you're seeing on there, we're gonna, um, that's a precursor to some of the slides we're going to be looking at soon. Those are um, some of the major connection points, some of those barriers that we were talking about. Those are the locations of those barriers. And you can probably see there's some intuitive ones there with the rails, intersections of the rails. There's some other ones, you know, crossing the, um, the, uh, the channel, the water channel, and some, um, some at-grid crossings that, um, that we'll get into as well. So before we get into these concepts, uh, just wanted to touch on a, three of kind of the major um, strategies for um, addressing some of these barriers. Um, the class one path is not really addressing a barrier, but that's the major facility type for the project. And the class one path is just a formal way of saying a multi-use trail or a trail in general. So um, those class one paths, the key to that is that they're separated from vehicular traffic. They provide a low stress facility and accommodate all ages and all abilities and um, is really the preferred and um, best facility for this type of project. Bike ped crossings, we're gonna see some bridges. Um, the grade separations, they're kind of the same thing. Grade separations are more uh, about, um, and Brad, correct me if I'm wrong here, I would define grade separations more about um, crossing a road or crossing a rail where bike ped crossings are more about crossing like a water feature or, or something of that nature. Would that be accurate in your, your assessment? Yeah, generally we think of it uh, like the picture depicts where you're, you're going beneath or, or over something. Uh, and typically that's uh, generally a road or it's uh, a um, <clears throat> railroad. Cool. So it's, it's the opposite of an at-grade crossing where you're crossing another roadway or railway facility at the same grade. Great, thanks for that. So let's look at some of these concepts. And we're gonna move west to east on the, the um, trail, or the trail area. So here we're at the um, North Fork Creek and the Coyote Creek where they, the confluence of those two creeks. Um, the overarching ideas of these concepts are pretty sound and baked. But again, just want to emphasize, these are concepts. The design and the final design are subject to change to some degree, but they're going to look um, something as um, you're going to see on, on these uh, upcoming slides. So here we're at the, the North Fork and the Coyote Creek confluence. And the concept for this barrier is to provide, um, extend from the existing Coyote Creek bikeway from the south 
cross the North Creek, um, North Fork Creek at the confluence and continue up the Coyote Creek um, on the western side of the channel. As the project approaches Artesia Boulevard, again, we have um, a bridge and a six lane um, arterial, I believe that's an arterial, and it is acting as a barrier. Um, the concept for this area includes a couple details here. There is a, um, a bypass which would travel underneath Artesia Boulevard. And then there would be access points to Artesia Boulevard on both sides of the street. So that's where you see those blue lines going up to the street that's at grade. So um, trail users will have that access to Artesia Boulevard. But if you're going to points beyond, you have that underpass that you can continue at the speed you're going and on your merry way. Here we're at the Union Pacific Railway and the Firestone Boulevard. Um, this is near um, I-5. As you can see, just off the optics here, this is a significant area. Lots of barriers here. The railway, Firestone Boulevard, the proximity of the two where they're at, um, significant barriers. This is actually one of my favorite concepts because um, it just tackles these significant barriers head on. As you can see, there's, an, um, th there's a grade above grade crossing over the railway and then a switchback that gets you back down to grade and then an underpass below grade, below Firestone Boulevard. So this actually kind of captures all of the different types of bicycle facilities in one design. Um, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty impressive, pretty cool. Continuing east where we're at Knott Avenue. Um, so this is where we go to an at grade crossing. Um, let me get to that concept. And this is due to the restrictions of, um, not being feasible to go below grade, below the bridge. Um, and it's also a somewhat um, calm street. It's only two lanes. The traffic volume is low. Um, it's mostly industrial traffic. So based off of those um, existing conditions and scenarios, a, an at-grade crossing um, is a sufficient design to get folks across the street at that point. As you can see here, this is a um, plan view of that same area. You can see the idea here is to um, consider ball bouts to decrease that crossing even more. And then um, if you see here these um, little blue dots with the arrows coming out, those would be um, control signals, traffic control signals um, for um, to alert drivers that there is a trail user crossing. So it's a pretty comprehensive and exhaustive design to um, establish an at-grade crossing at a very safe um, or a very safe method for folks um, to get through a relatively short distance here from point A to point B. Continuing over to the BNSF rail and uh, stage road. You see back here, stage road, and here's the, uh, um, the railway. And the concept here, this, um, this is a little bit of a different design, but this bridge structure here is the proposed concept. So you see it, it crosses over the rail and crosses over the channel, has another um, overpass here over Stage Road. 
and then goes back down to grade at the uh, this northwest section or northeast section here. And then to La Mirada, our last major barrier on the project. So La Mirada Boulevard, this is going to be um, the second of the at-grade crossings. And the, um, the concept that we originally had um, brings the trail up to La Mirada, down to this crosswalk, this proposed, um, the sidewalk, existing sidewalk is, I believe, eight feet. The proposal is to extend it out to 10 feet, use the traffic signal to cross either way, whichever way you're going, and then extend this sidewalk out as well to get back up to the channel and the trail. So this, um, this project is probably the one that is, um, being looked at a little bit more closely than the other projects. Um, I think there's some room um, for some tweaks potentially to ensure that there is no um, illegal crossing here or unsafe crossing here. Um, this break in the median, um, there's some concern that that break is going to encourage um, movements through here. So the county and the, uh, this is um, Buena Park, the city are um, considering some um, adjustments here and um, we're in the process of doing that now. So I can't report back on one way or the other, uh, except that there's still some um, evaluations being conducted on this project. So the project schedule, this project started last year. The environmental preliminary design was um, produced. And um, th there, this is some practitioner speak here and some engineer and project manager speak here. But in general, it just gives you kind of the, the state, these projects are developed in stages. Um, they take a few years and based off of the funding that we're applying for, that funding is um, on a timeline as well. So what you're seeing here is where we're at, we're in the design and the community outreach. Um, so this is part of the community outreach. We've done some tabling, we're going to release a survey. Um, we're gonna have some feedback opportunities from you here in a few minutes. Um, and that's going to, going to continue to inform the design, such as the La Mirada Boulevard project that we were just looking at. Once all of that is fully baked, then we move into final design, approval, and then coming back to the community for status um, for the, what the final design looks like and providing some expectations for funding and subsequent construction. So we are anticipating construction from 24 to 27. Um, that's based on the funding that the county is applying for. The state funding through the active transportation program, um, they, uh, they program that money or they award that money in um, uh, three years out. So it can start, you can start in the year it's awarded, which in this case would be 2024, and you have three years to spend it. So that gives us an idea of if the money is awarded in 2024, the project has to be done in 2027. So, I'm gonna pause right there before we get into the Mentimeter and the feedback um, and entertain any questions or comments. I have a question, please. Yeah. I'm looking at the crossing of Coyote Creek at Nott Avenue. And at that point, Coyote Creek is going basically east-west. And just a few hundred feet to the east of Knott Avenue, there's a, a railroad track. And I, I didn't see any mention of that in the presentation that you just gave, but what, what's the plan for crossing that railroad track? Yeah, if, if you go back to the drawing, Stephen, um, I think you pictured it, but you didn't really emphasize it. 
Oh, I've missed. I apologize for that. Yeah, I apologize for that, um, Mike. Oh, I see it. Right here. It's there's a below grade crossing there. It's a short tunnel beneath the uh, that's a <clears throat> BNSF railroad spur there. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you for pointing that out. I apologize, I missed that. And I also wanted to ask, tongue in cheek here, can I uh, get first shot at that at that crossing of uh, the BNSF and, and Stage Road? Because I want to I want to have the the KOM for like one minute before somebody who's actually fast steals it from me. <laughs> 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 oh, you're gonna have you're gonna have to arm wrestle me for it. <laughs> hey, we we can do it man to man. We'll we'll have a, a head on head race or something. That, that, that's uh, pretty awesome. I'm really looking forward to to riding it. Yeah, there there are facilities here where I'm just like I, I just want to ride on that thing. That's gonna be really cool. The just um, the views and the just you know looking forward to that so well knowing that you're trying to get out there first mike maybe i'll, I'll maybe i'll wake up with the chickens and try to get out there before you do. <laughs> <laughs> huh. okay so um are we down to our mike are you i think you're our um last uh your last public person on i only asked because i, I wonder if um when we get into the mentimeter if you're the only person we're gonna know this is it's kind of supposed to be um um like incognito but if you're the only person who's answering we're gonna know your answers so i think all <laughs> the call good answer just to yeah so we can kind of mask everyone's um, answers. <laughs> so uh, I encourage everyone to um, participate. But before we get into that, um, sorry, there's one more slide. Um, it's a little bit um, outdated because we already had the, uh, the tabling at Bellis Park. But on June 5th, we will be at Ralph B. Clark Regional Park. Ralph B. Clark Regional Park, say that five times really fast. Um, we'll be tabling there, and I also apologize that time is incorrect. Um, it'll be um, nine o'clock, nine a.m. to eleven a.m. And oh, was that changed? It was nine to one in the invite I got. Oh, really? I think so. Okay, we'll take a look at that. No, it's uh, okay. 9 to 11, I, I thought, but I, we'll take a look at that. Okay. And we'll be hosting the sur uh, a survey um, in addition to these tabling events and to this um, meeting we're having right now. Okay, so I need to change my screen. One second. Okay. So Menti meter, uh, for those, if you haven't used this before, it's really easy to log in. Um, if you want to log in through the web address, it's just menti.com. And then it will prompt you for that uh, code. Um, or if you're on a, um, if you're using a phone, you can just scan that QR code and it will take you directly to the, um, the code. So I'll give everyone a minute to 
to log on. And if you want to confirm, give me a, a voice confirmation or raise your hand if you want to in the virtual raise your hand. And Serena, I'm sorry if I missed you before. I, did, I don't think I saw your, your um, picture or avatar there, but um, welcome as well. And if you have any questions, feel free. Don't hesitate to ask. Are we, is everyone on yet or need a few more minutes? Uh, for some reason, um, I've, I've gone to that location, mentimeter.com and entered the code and I'm getting nothing at this moment. Hmm. Just, a, just a white screen. It says Mentimeter at the top and then instructions, but that's all. Yeah, I've got this. Oh, wait a minute. It, it finally loaded. Just the same thing here, just now. Okay. okay. Yeah. I probably had to go to this uh, first, um, the first question. Okay, so for everyone, um, quick definitions for these. Uh, strong and fearless, those are the folks you see that are out there every day, um, rain or shine, daylight or dark, they're on their bike, doesn't matter. They're, they're gung-ho about it and going for it. Enthused and confident, they bike a lot, probably bike to work, even bike to work every day, as long as it's not raining or um, there's not a whole lot of shared um, shared roadways with high speed vehicles. You know, the enthused and confident like to have more bike lanes, trails, that sort of thing. Interested but concerned. Um, this is more about the folks who heard about biking, maybe saw a coworker bike to work. I was like, hmm, that looks pretty fun. And that person seems to be pretty healthy. I really like to do that, but I don't, I, I have some safety concerns or I have some uh, logistics concerns. You know, with maybe I, I would show up sweaty to work and that sort of thing. So they're, 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 they could be converted to a cyclist. They just have to maybe make, prepare for some things or um, learn some, some things. So looks like we have the interested but concerned um, as the majority here. And I didn't participate, but I would also, at one point I was strong and fearless. And as I'm getting older, I'm now interested but concerned. So there's also, it's a fluid thing. I'd like to get back to strong and fearless, but I don't know. Moving on, we'd like to know where people are coming from. So tell us where, what city you're, you're from. So it looks like we should have added a lot more cities. A lot of South Orange County people. La Mirada would have been a good choice too. So we could only, we were limited in the number of cities that we could include. So we just included all the Orange County. Um, I don't know if we could even include all the Orange County cities. Okay, thanks for that. How often do you bike or use bike trails? And what factors keep you from biking?
And if you um, if you state other and if you feel comfortable with saying why, you absolutely do not have to. But if you do feel comfortable in saying why, feel free to put it in the chat. Okay. And safety. What are your concerns for um, safe bicycling? And we ask that you choose your top three um, or the top three. Or maybe in this case, it's the, the bottom three. These are the worst things. Um, these are your safety concerns. Okay, vehicle speeds, distracted driving, those seem to be um, the major reasons, and those are uh, those are definitely significant safety issues. Lack of bikeways and then lack of lighting of vehicle traffic bringing them in. Okay. Which bikeways do you prefer? So rank these um, as the highest preference to lowest preference. I'm having a little, I'm only, oh, select an option. Oh, okay. So I guess you select the first one and then it allows you to select the second one. Yeah, that should, that should be how it works. Uh, we have one more person. Okay, so off street trails, which is good news for our project, since it is an off street trail. Um, buffered bike lanes and protected bike lanes, those make sense. And uh, bike lanes and shared lanes based off of their lack of separation. Um, you can see why that is um, the least preferred facilities. So destinations. What features and places would bring you out to regional and local trails? Or another way to look at this, what would you use the regional and local trails to visit? Okay, so we have a uh, tie for first with parks and scenic destinations. Um, that makes sense. Then shopping and dining. A lot of restaurants and shopping areas are catering more and more to folks arriving by bicycle. Um, travel to work and travel to school. It's probably more indicative of our, the demographic of our um, meeting more so than um, anything else, but um, that makes sense. And then this is an open question. 
So we're asking that you um, feel free to be specific if you are going to um, Ralph's on the corner of, or the intersection of so-and-so, feel free to say that. Um, and you can be as general as you would like to with work beach and park as you see up there. So this is open-ended. It's gonna be uh, kind of like one of those word capture, word cloud sort of things. And, and you're not being specific to this bikeway project? It would be specific to this bikeway project, yes. Okay, so if I were in the area, where would I go? Right. And I think you have the option to enter more than one destination. Oh, I like the beach with schnauzer. That sounds fun. Okay, so that's all of us there. Science Museum, that's cool. Um, park, beach work, parks again, um, shopping. There's a Target and an H Mart. So we've got a kind of a mix of recreation and errand running. We've got work there. So um, we're seeing use and destinations that really are um, this facility and this project is going to support and encourage. Um, providing facilities for existing cyclists is very important, but also this project is going to create new cyclists, which is really um, a impressive metric for projects like this. The return on investment, creating new cyclists, cre um, in increasing cycling trips, all of that stuff, all of those outputs and metrics um, are all a part of this destination. So good to see, visit friends or family. That's great. Um, so I'm going to close that. And that is the end of the presentation. And we have a few minutes for some questions or comments. Um, compliments, you know, we just don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, Bill Sellen and I yesterday had a great discussion uh, with everybody about not Avenue and La Mirada Boulevard in general. I appreciate the chance to do that. And I appreciate the chance to uh, kind of grind on you guys for a while. Uh, but like I said yesterday, I, I really appreciate the scope and the, uh, the magnitude and the complexity of this project. And uh, I'm really excited. I, I hope it gets funding. I hope it goes through because right now, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, this whole area that the proposed project goes through is kind of a, a nowhere land can't get there from here basically uh and and an extension of the coyote creek trail would really uh open that whole area up yeah i appreciate your input too mike um that was a great discussion yesterday um i thought it was really uh, fruitful and helpful to move the project forward um in a lot of ways so thank you and bill for for your input and um support and dedication to this project and, and just the cycling community in general. Um, so that is the end of the presentation. Um, Sonica, I don't know if you had any um, thing you wanted to wrap, to put a button on this um, meeting. I'll give the floor to you. Um, no, thank you uh, again, Bill. Uh, like, like you said, we had a great discussion yesterday um, and we continue looking forward to 
uh, chatting with you on you know future by four projects and continuing our discussions on this one. So thanks for attending today. And um, I know Serena is is here. We have an uh, I saw some um, some chat notes here from you. I, I don't know if you wanted to share anything um, with us or if you had anything um, you wanted to add uh, add today. I, I did put a request in the chat uh, to get a, a good quality version of the map that you presented at the beginning of our discussion. The map is called, uh, the title was Project Segments Alignment. And I, I've seen that map in the brochures, but gosh, if you could send me a, a, a good quality of that, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Yeah, About, e, e, yeah, and can you can you let us know the timing for Sunday? I, I looked and I, I got an invite. It said it said for 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., but the hours that it covered was from nine to one. That was the placeholder for the meeting, Brad, but we finalized the meeting from nine to eleven. Okay. All right. Yeah, I just checked the flyer as well. It's nine to eleven. Super. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and we will be posting this PowerPoint on our website as well tomorrow. Could you say that again, please? Uh, we'll we'll be posted this PowerPoint tomorrow on our website, so you can access if you want to see the PowerPoint again. Yeah, Stephen and Danusha, can you stay on for just a second after we? Yeah, well, sure. Uh, after we let the public off, <laughs> I, I have a. A question, thought on the presentation. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'll say good evening to all of you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, uh, uh, thanks. Hey, Stephen, can you go back to the